Hey, and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the Team Fortress movie, Emesis Blue. This is something I've been doing research on for days and weeks now to understand what it's all about. Okay? Okay, let's start. Emesis Blue is a physiological horror movie about corporate secrecy and what happens when you cheat death too often. The movie features three main characters, the soldier, the medic, and the spy. On Halloween night of 1968, an executive of the Builders League United Corporation mysteriously vanished in modern New Mexico. A private detective and a washed up war veteran teams up to find him, yet the man they hunt is more dangerous than they can possibly imagine. The movie resolves around the respawn machine. At one moment or another, Archbold realized that it would be far more cheaper to maintain a war between Redmond and Blue Torch if they had the ability to respawn the mercenaries. So they find nine which are compatible. The problem is the respawn machine itself can be faulty and problems with the new mercenaries begin to arise. This is linked to the fact that maybe the machine pulls the souls of the mercenaries from hell from the chapter 6 in a movie called Catabasis, which in Greek means Descent to Hell. Descent to Hell is a scene where a soldier has jumped down to the horrifying pitfall of bodies, basically all of this creating an endless loop of reincarnation in which eventually the new bodies become corrupted and hateful. Take a look at Sniper, for example. Chapter 1 Memories and Nightmares The first thing we see in the movie is the trial tapes of recruiting World War II veterans from using the respawn machine. It was a massive failure in the start when there was war and after. In the trailer MS's Diaspam is telling us all about what humans and respawn machine does with each other. An example is, the human mind requires 6 to 8 hours of uninterrupted sleep to fully heal itself. This can be assisted by induced medication, the same as the medic gave Scout when they were talking with each other at the hospital. Take one of these tonight, this should help. Come on doc, I don't need this stuff. I think you do Scout, it just doesn't seem normal. The pills medic gave Scout is called Valium Diaspam. Valium Diaspam is a drug that is prescribed for anxiety or occasionally sleeping problems, isomania and schizophrenia. The respawn machine is told everyone who gets the hold of it to be respawned again has a chance of 99% of respawning and 1% of failure. Let's talk about when it comes to memories and nightmares. The nightmare that Madiki has is a plaguey daughter that is following him and terrifying him, that is also a very surreal human being. This plaguey daughter is actually a person spying on Scout and Medic. There's a scene right before Scout's death, the plaguey doctor's car is outside his house. What I also found out about this plaguey doctor that in my opinion I found out is that it could really much be medic. First of all, medics back in the 16th century used to wear a mask not to get infections, so called the plaguey doctors. The plaguey person in Emesis Blue is also very interested in the briefcase as everyone else is. The parallels between Medic and the Plague Doctor is to both protect the briefcase to not get revealed to the world. Heavy, a very normal game character in the TF2 industry, but there is something else different with him that takes place in Nemesis Blue. In the game, Porgon Knight at the inventory, the Heavy is unaware that he's a game character, even believes his cycle of dying and respawning are a series of nightmares. And these kind of nightmares is also the same as with Medic, having nightmares about the Planky Doctor following him around and also being dead and coming back to life and then becoming even more evil in the story goes on. But enough of that. Archibald is kidnapped, Spy and Soldier begin an investigation in which they find Blue Heavy carrying a briefcase. The contents of the briefcase are unknown, but they end up being the cause of Blue Medics having a car crash that is later revealed in the movie. Chapter 2 
Chapter 2 How Respawning Works One fact I found that is really concerned and that is a very large thing to be true is that the respawn machine could also take a form of the person's body in the form of the past life when they were alive. What I mean is that the body takes your dead body, rebuilds it, makes it so real again, giving you half of the memories you had before, making you think nothing of it as if you never died. I say this because of the scene where Soldier is telling Spy at the open water bridge scene in front of the Conniger slaughterhouse, he tells Spy what he is going to use the rocket launcher for, which he says, I'm gonna use it to jump over the other side, which is death. Spy tells him, are you crazy? You're gonna get us killed. Soldier replies with, come on, I have done it before. Done it before. Why would he have done it before? And why would he even say that? It's a memory. That is a memory Soldier has had in the mind, and what if he has experienced before? That, to me, sounded very interesting for a topic. Just what do you plan to do with it? I'm gonna use it to jump across this ravine. You really have lost your mind, haven't you? What? I've done it before. Put that down before you get us killed. Chapter 3 Secrets of Slaughterhouse As Medic, Spy and Soldier enter the Conniger Slaughterhouse, they quickly realize that the place is normal. Creepy, deformed creatures attack them, which resembles other mercenaries. As they progress, more supernatural events begin to happen, in which we learn about the respawn machine and how the mercenaries got chosen for it. Basically, they were sentenced to a death row, and after dying, the respawn machine found them compatible to respawn. The blue keeps them as an asset. As we see what happens in the slaughterhouse, a lot of people dying and killing each other. But the one scene that catched my eye is, we all know that it, the respawn machine was rusty and had problems, but when Medic is using it, it has a file corruption as if the person that will respawn will have a low chance of coming back as a normal living person, but more as the one like Sniper looking more like a half-alive demon with body parts missing or brain missing. The respawn machine had, has had our rusty files making it a low chance of coming back, which we see later Medic laying on the ground with his gun after shooting the corpse of an un unknown entity being Scout's or Scout's mother that can respond as something else, which is then perceived to be Medic realizing he was the murderer of Scout's mom if not being a clone. Secret details, it's all among us. I think it's possible that a suitcase is responsible for the time anomalies that we see throughout the film. It's present when Soldier sees himself early in the film that might have been a hint for a loop. In the first fight, Heavy hits Spy with a briefcase, which might activate a controller as is responsible for a loop. <laughs> the medic also seems to change personality upon dying, so that would pro probably would explain why he killed Scout, but still, I'm unsure. An even bigger clueless thing I had on my mind if there might be two medics at the same time anomalies. The medicine Ludwig has given to Scout and himself, the name of it is Valium Pills. Then Ludwig sees the paper of it is about to fall off. The real name to the pill case is Emesis Diaspam. which is a whole another thing. Valium is then generally prescribed for anxiety or occasionally sleeping problems, but diaspam is used to create, to threat or create an anxiety, muscle spams, and seizures or fits. 
It's also used in a hospital to reduce alcohol withdrawal symptoms such as sweating or difficulty sleeping. Extra parts to talk about. The scene with Pyro and Spy, Spy is concerned about everything around him. People has been questioning about this scene because it doesn't really give us much context of what really ha is happening. Spy proceeds to ask Pyro what he, does he want. Pyro then answers him with taking off his mask. What do you want? Showing Spy his burnt up face and walk into the dark with a lighter up to his face. That is the answer Spy questioned him about. Pyro wants his face back. As then later Spy gets karma from trying to kill killing the Pyro who wanted his face but then missing his cigarette into the oil burning Spy's face and body up making them really equal. And when I say really equal it might even be the Spy in a different time anomaly being the same character but it's burnt body. Secret Chapter after Demoman went into the bar that is actually a laboratory, Sizelops meets his old friend Del. Del is also the same bar name we we'll see at the end of the movie, we will discuss that later. Sizelops and Del has a short talk about Demo thinking he was dead and his brother said no, so. Del just laughs it up, Del says relapse is this hell of a thing. Relapse means a sick or injured person collapse after a period of improvement. Del's face is then filled with blood coming out of his nose, like he got punched. I thought you were miles away, lad. Where you been hiding? Who says I've been hiding? Your brothers thought you were dead. <laughs> Relapse is a hell of a thing, ain't it? Too right. figured out how to bring us back. Some of us would tell stories about what we saw on the other side. We saw old friends, family, mostly strangers. I spoke to my grandfather. He's been dead for 30 years. What'd he tell you? Then the whole meaning came. Del knows about what happens when they come back to life. They tell they would tell stories, old friends and family. Del even talked to his grandfather in his memories, even though his grandfather was, has been dead for over the past 30 years. Where his grandfather is, Del asked about it and how it was. The story then ends with its eternity in there, the same as the one soldier at the respawn trials of the VHS tapes said. It's eternity in there. Meaning, when they come to Dell's bar, if they feel like they're in eternity being there, being dead. Because death, you know, if you're dying, you're you're just in an eternity um death place, dream you can say. And that is what Dell's bar occasionally is. An eternity. Ooh. 
Oof. This chapter is going to be a long one, so enjoy it. Chapter 4. Secrets being established. Now Soldier, when we walk over to the black and white scene of the table, listening to the call, we can hear Archibald and Blue Torch at a phone call that has been recorded. Seems to be playing onto the phones. We can hear two subjects being talked through this. One, the small subject pregnancy machine, which is a weird project to start, and the second one, the respawn machine, which has been talking about the last 90% of the people they needed for the army, which then is only nine people that are respawn compatible. Plutarch? Plutarch, can you hear me? Lower your voice, Plutarch, I can hear you just fine. Am I coming through clear? No, I can't see you. No, Plutarch, this is a telephone call, much faster than air mail. Plutarch, we... What do you mean, who is this? It's Jules Archibald. We last spoke in Dallas over you know what. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm calling about the project we discussed. Oh, the pregnancy machine. No, not the pregnancy machine, the other one. Yes, there's been a slight hiccup, so to speak. The respawn machine works. It technically works. Plutarch, however... Uh, no, you see, that's the problem. They say we've lost about 90% of the test subjects. What? I, I know you're upset, Plutarch, but the good news is we found about 10 of them that are respawn compatible. Uh, hold on a moment. What the hell is going on? He shot himself? Oh, bloody hell. Just throw him in the pit with the others. Excuse me, nine, Blue Talk. You promised me an army, Archibald. Well, think of the money you'll save. Mercenaries are very cheap these days. With a respawn machine on every front line, there will be no worry. You'll surely win this war by the end of the financial year. That's not allow a respawn gap. The respawn gap? You must be joking. This whole conversation is proved to show that the respawn point was never a safe machine, but it was only used for a war. Archibald is mostly after the spare of money and making sure the others agree with him. In the next scenes, where there were cameras spying on Archibald, that is a spy spying on him, listening to Archibald talking about if anyone gets to know he was kidnapped but just pretended, he would be committed for a war crime of making a machine of and murdering test subjects. I simply won't. I'm already on thin ice with the old man, and if any word gets out about that godforsaken asylum, I'll be sued into oblivion. Me, maybe even hung. My chances for re-election will be ruined. I am not going down for a war cry. Well, I told you not to make that deal. So what if I made a deal with the old man's brother? The war is their business, and mine is to drag it out for as long as humanly possible. That infernal, unholy contraption is my lifeline, Goldman. thought about it, surely, uh, as a last resort, but if I can use it to disappear for a while, it's a chance I'll have to take. Where am I calling from? That's a stupid question. You know bloody hell where I am. I heard you've been kidnapped. What's going on? Kidnapped? I don't know anything about that. Listen very carefully, Goldman. I think there are people trying to kill me. And worse yet, I think this Valium is actually... Continue this call. Please deposit five cents. No oh, blast! Archibald then tries to buy a drink from the vending machine after the phone call was done but it had no other panties to use on it, but it does not work. He then lifts up, open a garage door and is in shock in what he sees behind it, resulting in him promptly looking for a way out. It is later revealed by Jane Doe that it was a massive pitfall of thousand bodies with a hellish red glow emitting from the bottom. Joe is a soldier, if you did not know that. Archibald soon chances upon Morneum, the spy, giving him a sense of relief at first, but soon dissipates into fear as he sees the horrible burns on his partner and realizes he isn't there to save him. Morneo, no longer held by loyalty for the corrupt governor, having learned that he was in no real danger all along, 
and that all in the trouble he went through was all for nothing. He grows increasingly angry with Jules, who tries to reason that he gave him everything he had wanted, to which Morneau replies he was now giving him what he deserved, and shoots the official dead in the head. After he dragged his body into a chair. The chair, I have nothing, no information about that one. Following this, Morneau, Morneau fought, will frame Ludwig from the murder of the Jules, Jules is Archibald, and attempt a hostile takeover of the company at the funeral, but it fails as the received doctor pops out of the coffin and shoots him dead. We will talk about that more later. Let's talk about what is Dell's bar, because I already talked about what Dell and Demoman was talking about together. But what really is Dell's bar? Everything you need to know about the bar can be determined in a very shot of it. The unmiscable call back to the bar in the shining purgatory is a space where people go before being respawned. Dell tells Demo when he enters its eternity in here. Archibald appears at the end of the signification that Ludwig is also dead, but might also indicate that the Archibald is capable of respawning, or that his, this liminal space is for all dead people, and not just those waiting to be respawned. Assuming we can trust the newspaper's headlines and other characters' involvement, this call, this all can't be product of this fervid mind. Ludwig is struggling with his sanity and possibly his morality, but that doesn't mean someone didn't do this to him. He may have psychotic episodes, but he is a healer at a heart. Maybe none of them are alive in traditional sense. It seems an odd coincidence that the number of people who died at Otterbold's funeral is that exact number of mercenaries that survived the respawn brothers procedure. Additionally, unreliable narratives, narrators or outright lies heavily manipulate much of what we learn. It's possible nothing beyond the name of the companies is true. The people who were experimented on could be random men. It might explain the moral compass Ludwig and Doe struggle with in the entire film. If the bar is purgatory, war is hell and peace is heaven. Maybe none of what we see is real, and all of this is a struggle to choose where any of them deserves to go after death. I have a hard time buying this theory, but I at least bears mentioning. Jules Archibald is the face of the company, but it is possible that he is just a figurehead, and the real power rests with Dell. It would explain why he seems so in control in the bar. It is also possible whoever that he may have been the brains of the operation that was killed and stuck a copy of himself in the machine before he died to live on a digital version. Maybe he is the corrupted file. Chapter 5 Hellish Ending Hold out on this one. This one is also very long. After blowing up the Conagor slaughterhouse, our front for Helix respawn facility, Soldier is debriefed and instructed to keep his mouth shut. He attends Governor Archibald's funeral and Spy, who miraculously survived the previous events of Emesis Blue, declares himself the new chairman of the board of his foundation. Joe refuses to pin the guilt on Dr. Ludwig, so Spy steps up. Spy also lies about what really went down inside a slaughterhouse and said Dr. Ludwig did eventually everything, including Scout and his mother's death. Ludwig, who responds at some point from his death by Russian roulette, sits up in a coffin and shoots Spy multiple times while Doe looks on shocked. Ludwig 
then narrowly escape getting shot by stealing an ambulance. While this happens, Doe follows Blue Man and shoots him in the back of his car. Red Man sees his brother dead and while gloating is run over and killed by Ludwig in an escape ambulance. Both men are now dead and in theory there is no longer a need for respawning because the war is over. <laughs> Necessary. I am simply illustrating a point that this man was capable of kidnapping and murder. How did we let this happen? Archibald is dead because we failed him. Punish. So, in Archibald's death, and in accordance to his will, I will be taking his place as chairman of the board to end this treason and corruption once and for all. As Ludwig is sitting in a hospital car escaping the funeral, we see Scout as a hallucination later on. We see a glimpse of his escaped Ludwig and his apartment. This is the looped back to when Soldier and Spy was going to meet Stalingrad the Heavy which to escape, Ludwig is going to for clothing up to be using the Plagio mask. Then the hallucination dream, Ludwig driving in full speed, dreaming about Dell's bar, which is the living dream of eternity. Ludwig walks into the Dell's bar in the middle of darkened space and talks briefly to Dell. Makes a call to Scout while he's in the restroom. Ludwig takes some of his MSS diaspam and sees Archibald come out of the restroom. <clears throat> At this point, the camera pulls back to where to reveal Ludwig in front of the seat of the ambulance dead, having a hit light pole. What is it really this tube of bodies swimming around in this just bloodbath? This tube explained to how of how each of the nine responsible people is. 
this tube is meant to be all the bodies that will continue on respawning them. The briefcase everyone had been chasing was open emitting a red light. In the final moments we see a cell hooded figure emerging from the fiery door of what appears to be a slaughterhouse. Considering the Faust's facility collapsed before the funeral, this is probably the scene where Ludwig responds to find his way to Archibald's funeral. We don't know if Ludwig will respawn again, perhaps using a mobile unit in the briefcase, or if he is dead for good now, since the war is over. Chapter 6 Hell Let's talk about Soldier. Soldier is now found in the pit of hell where all the dead bodies go after dying. Chapter, the chapter 6 catabasis approximately is focused entirely on his troops. Troops, that means when he was in the laboratory, he found a picture that was taken with Archibald shooting the soldiers inside of the, the glass where they are frozen. And that is some kind of, you can say, test subject they have done. And all of those bodies have then gone down to where the pit of hell is. Where Soldier is seeing all of his bodies, or all of those troop bodies, has been shot to dead. Soldier jumps into a bottomless pit of corpses in order to escape from Stalingrad. And finds himself trapped in a strange, nightmarish underworld filled with dead bodies. Fire and brimstone and distant screams. After battling Stalingrad, Soldier continues to fall further and further down this nightmarish pit, until the final finally manages to find a ladder and climb back up to the surface. Soldier is trapped around in this worst place. The worst place is because this is basically hell. Joe is also getting haunted by the 10th compatible person of responding, which is the 10th class, that took suicide on a call we heard from Archibald and Blutheart. 
First, Archibald said it was 10 compatible ones, then we hear a gunshot, then proceeds to 9 compatibles left. This soldier seems to be the one without eyes and is trying to show the soldier the right way, making him not allowed to cross the bridge, but must experience the rest of the loop. This 10th compatible class is seen at the VHS tapes, then at the scenes of the cells, and at the end of the bridge in hell. After falling into the water, we get to see the 10th face, with an interrupted soldier wakes up from the water. The 10th class is a nightmare following soldier and also a hallucination that the movie is also going on to. Chapter 7 The Ending The end of the theory is here. I have done a lot of research, a lot of things, a lot of search there over here, reviewed a movie most like 10 or 15 times the, the, just to understand it. It was uh, a movie that had context, but it was very hard to understand the whole thing. And in the last few days, a few weeks, or no, the weeks that has passed of research and watching the movie of confusion, of course, I have watched it and watched it and wrote and wrote and found new details, found new things to write, and I need to do, erase a lot of text, find new text, write new text, and all that. But the whole theory is just my theory and I wanted to explain it because a lot of people said they did not understand the movie and so I wouldn't I want to take the place of YouTube genres of English youtubers to explain what the movie really is about so I took my time took time and time just to focus on this one I did not care about anything else I was of course with my family but I wanted to focus more on this just to get done with it and today was today that I actually did everything done. I edited, I I spoke, I, I told my theory, I told my explanation of the movie. I tried to understand every single bit of it. I watched every single details of text, of of scenes, of the genres, or the, like where the scene was happening, or what was happening in the movie. And to YouTube employees, I love you all, and I want you all to promote this, mo this whole explanation to everyone because this is really big for me and I never done this before but for a thank you to all the people that was going to view this video is I love you all to who listen to it I love the ones who listen to it I love the people who actually enjoy to explain content of this whole movie of MS blue I did not know that Tame Fortress 2 would ever get a movie just as big good as this. MSS Blue has to be the one of a kind of industry movies from a game that is alone, sitting, rotting, of no updates. MSS Blue is one of my favorite game movies that has been this year, but soon this year is going to get something else that's much better. But that's the end of the theory. Love you all who listen to this theory. Bye bye for now, and I'll see you guys on the upcoming videos and some videos that will make some comeback on YouTube. Sorry for not posting for a long while, I had taken some time off. I had a burnout, so I had I, I had my time off. I'm I was kind of done with everything because I'm a solo YouTuber, I'm a solo editor, I need to do everything myself alone. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next videos upcoming this year. Bye bye for now. I love you all.